It took only three league games, but the questions over Eric Ten Hag's future at Manchester United are already back like they never left. The Liverpool defeat at home had the noise reaching levels of crescendo and the next game away to newly promoted Southampton already has an air of must win around it. Eric Ten Hag has been quick to point towards the two trophies his team has won the last two seasons, the latter of which arguably saved his job. It was no secret that Eric Ten Hag's position was under serious threat towards the end of last season with Ineos holding talks with several managerial candidates. Ineos, or even Ten Hag himself, made no effort to hide the fact that multiple managers were contacted in the summer for the job at Old Trafford. It was a unique way of communication when talks with other managers, while the incumbent was on holiday, were admitted publicly. But an impressive FA Cup final win over Manchester City, paired with backing from the fans, meant that Ineos eventually stuck with the Dutchman and rewarded Ten Hag with a new contract. Ultimately, Ten Hag took great pride in announcing himself that Ineos told him after talking to other options that they already had the best man for the job. That is why Nicky Butt has now urged Ineos to be decisive and stick to their guns, pointing a madness scenario. He said, the managers put a squad together that's going to have to learn the way of playing and be successful. I think we were probably the only big football club in the world that didn't have a sporting director, didn't have certain things in place, but now we have. So hopefully there's no excuses, but it will take time. You might have put a squad together, but you can't expect them to go on the pitch and be dominant. We're going to have to be patient, but long. Is that going to take? I don't know. And I think if they gave him an extension and they kept him on, they have got to give him time, otherwise get rid of him in the summer. It's madness to get rid of him in November, December or January, because unless they've got someone waiting, which quite obviously they haven't, they would have done it in the summer. They have got to stand by him. They have got to give him a bit of time and hopefully he will get it right over the next few months. Uh, but makes a valid point that unless someone who wasn't on the market has suddenly become available, it would be extremely bad optics for Ineos to sack Ten Hag. Even more so because of Ten Hag's claim of Ineos telling him they have the best man for the job and the market not having changed since. A loud backing of that level can't be undone by a few bad results and although the scrutiny is understandable, Ineos have backed themselves into a corner when it comes to pulling the trigger. Moreover, the point about letting it play out and seeing how the team develops is also a pertinent one. Even though this is Ten Hag's third year, he's effectively starting at a new club due to the structural changes with a team that has five new faces. Therefore, this year might be one where Ineos have to ride it out regardless of what happens on the pitch, barring some unforeseen free fall in results and performances. However, it is up to Ten Hag to make sure he's in the dugout next year. So far, he hasn't been making a very strong case for himself. Successive losses to Brighton and Liverpool have raised huge questions about Ten Hag's future and the club owners have a serious concern about his role. Now, this is what United fans really think of Eric Ten Hag as they deliver verdict in a survey. The jury is still out on Eric Ten Hag's role as Manchester United manager, especially after another poor start to the Premier League season. Sick of the manager Mary go round in recent years, the majority of United fans stuck with Ten Hag last season despite the poor league results. Their voices were heard by Ineos, but confidence in the Dutchman is already dwindling just three games into the new campaign. With opinions seemingly split on whether Ten Hag should stay or go, Manchester Evening News held a fan survey on the United boss. Over 7,200 supporters responded to the survey, and when asked if Ten Hag was the right man for the United job, 66% of fans said no. A whopping 68% of fans also voted that Ten Hag would not be in charge of United by the end of the season. After publicly flicking through their options over the summer, Ineos will look amateurish if they sack Ten Hag this early into the season. They clearly decided that there were no better candidates available for the job, so now they must stick with Ten Hag at least for a few more months. United have been urged to sack Ten Hag already, but if the emotion is taken away from the disappointing loss to Liverpool, then there are positives to take from performances this season. Uh, the new signings made over the summer look like good additions to the squad and United played some impressive football against Fulham and Brighton. United have massively struggled in front of goal, missing more big chances than any other top flight side. If that issue can be solved, then it's not too late for Ten Hag to turn things around. Ten Hag came to United with a clear vision for how he wanted his team to play, high pressing, quick transitions and controlled possession. His philosophy is built around having a solid defensive structure and a fluid attack, something he successfully implemented at Ajax. 
At United, we've seen glimpses of this approach working well, especially in games where United dominate the ball and can dictate the tempo. However, there have been several occasions where the style has looked chaotic and disjointed, especially against teams that sit deep or are well-organized defensively. The recent defeats against teams like Liverpool show that Ten Hag's tactics can sometimes fall apart under pressure, revealing vulnerabilities in defense and a lack of cohesion in attack. Ten Hag's management of players has been a hot topic. He has shown a willingness to be ruthless dropping big names like Cristiano Ronaldo or pushing out players who don't fit his style or attitude. On the other hand, he's built strong relationships with key players like Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford and Case Miro, giving them prominent roles in his system. Now, Ten Hag has also brought in players he trusts like Lissandro Martinez and Anthony from his former club Ajax and Matijas de Ligt from Bayern, suggesting he values familiarity and loyalty. However, his strict approach has its downsides. Some players seem to be struggling to adapt to his high standards and expectations, and there have been rumors of discontent within the squad. This has raised questions about whether he is flexible enough in his approach and whether he can handle the unique pressures of managing a club as big as Manchester United. Since arriving at United, Ten Hag has overseen significant spending to strengthen the squad. Big money has been spent on players like Anthony, Lissandro Martinez, Rasmus Hojland, Lenny Yoro, and Manuel Ugarte. In total, he's overseen transfers worth over £300 million, which is a massive investment. While some of these signings like Martinez and Casemiro have somehow paid off, others like Anthony have yet to prove they are worth their price tags. Questions have also been raised about whether the spending has been balanced. United still looks short in key areas like central midfield and full back, despite the heavy spending. This spending spree has put pressure on Ten Hag to deliver results quickly, but the inconsistencies in performances suggest that the squad is still very much a work in progress. If results don't improve, he might not have the luxury of time to fully implement his vision. Looking ahead, Ten Hag faces several challenges. He needs to find a way to make his style of play work more consistently in the Premier League, especially against top teams. He must also manage player relationships carefully to maintain a harmonious squad while enforcing his standards. The recent performances suggest that there is still a long way to go before United can consistently compete with the best teams in England and Europe. Ten Hag also needs to justify the money spent by delivering tangible results like qualifying for the Champions League and making deeper runs in cup competitions. The potential is there. Players like Hojland, Ugarte and Xerxes show promise for the future, but the manager must blend this talent effectively. The next few months will be crucial in determining whether Ten Hag can take United to the next level or if he will struggle to meet the club's lofty expectations. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments below.